I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making this fabulous lip stain. It's also on my cheeks. <laughs> So this is a recipe I first published on the blog back in 2013. And before I published it, I spent a lot of time researching and experimenting with loads of different colorants. I wanted something that would properly stain my lips. I tried shop-bought lip stains and they were always just very disappointing, sort of low pigment, and they just really didn't deliver that long-lasting color punch that I was looking for. Because yeah, I don't love reapplying my lip color. I'm pretty lazy that way. I wanted something that was sort of put it on and forget about it and it would stay put. And this stuff does. But it took me a really long time to find the pigment that would work. Of course I tried sort of oxides first. Not great. Tried some plant-based ones because I knew, it, I knew it needed to be soluble in water so that it would actually sink into your skin and stain your lips. So I tried a lot of botanical extracts like rosehip and beetroot and none of those worked. They're simply not potent enough. I also tried some synthetic dyes. Again, no dice. I tried clays. They shift in color and make your mouth look really weird and splotchy. So, since lip stain is so, so, so simple to make, we're basically just gonna be taking like a little container like this, like a three or a five gram plastic container. You add the carmine, and then you add your drops of water and glycerin and maybe some silk, and stir it with a toothpick and that's, that's seriously it. So I'm not gonna make a really detailed how-to video for lip stain because it's really easy. It makes instant noodles look complicated. So what we're going to look at instead is more of a sort of a why not video because even though I feel like I'm making a really big deal about why Carmine is like, it is absolutely necessary, I know somebody's still gonna ask me, but can I use something else instead? So I'm going to show you why not. So we'll be taking a look at Carmine, the one that works, and then Red Iron Oxide, Rosehip Botanical Extract, and FD&C Red Number 7. So you can see why those don't work. So a super beautiful thing about this recipe and making your own cosmetics in general is the ability to customize it to exactly what you want. So here, I've made the lip stain really thick. I have used barely any water, so I've got an amazing deep, punchy red hue. If you don't want your lip stain to be this strong, just use more water. It's really, really simple, super, super easy to customize, and as you can see, incredibly potent. So a few quick application tips for this stuff. Because it's water-based, your lips need to be dry. Not peeling, cracked, gross dry, but you don't want to have any lip balm or oil products on them, because of course, oil and water don't mix. So if you have a layer of oils and butters on your mouth, your water-based lip stain is just going to beat up and run off. So your lips should be hydrated, but not oily. So that way you can paint it on and it'll sink in. And after that, you can apply lip balm, lip gloss over top of it once it dries for hours, which is fantastic. Case in point, I've got some here. It didn't budge. <laughs> You also wanna make sure that you're not applying the lip stain sort of too far into your lip and sort of underneath. You wanna keep it on the parts of your lip that you're not constantly moistening from the inside of your mouth. If you do, it is going to run off and get on your teeth and it's going to look like you just felled an elk or something. So keep it, keep it on the outside of your lips. Keep it out of your mouth. <laughs> That's about it. So come on, let's get started. All right, here are four colorants. We have Carmine, Red Iron Oxide, Red Number no. 7, and a Rosehip Powder or Rosehip Botanical Extract. So these three powders or pigments are the ones that I am most often asked about using in lip stain instead of Carmine. So in addition to showing you how we're going to make the lip stain with Carmine, I wanted to show you why we're not making it with these three pigments. So this is Red Iron Oxide. You can see right away that it's a much different color than Carmine. It's a much browner, ruddier tone of red than Carmine, which is a bright pinkish red. So iron oxides are insoluble, but you can blend them with water. So I'll add a few drops of water here, and you'll see that the water sort of disperses relatively easily. And we'll give it a little bit of a stir with a wee toothpick here. 
So you can see that's creating sort of a creamy red paste. And we'll use our little lip brush here to apply some to my hand. So you can see that's, that's really quite lovely. It's a strong paint-like concoction. So the reason we don't use red iron oxide in lip stain is because it doesn't wear very well. Because it is insoluble, what ends up happening is you end up having these sort of powdery pigments that eventually rub each other off your lips while you're wearing the lip stain. So when we're working with red iron oxide, we need a little bit of oil involved. And I didn't want to involve oil in this lip stain, otherwise it wouldn't be able to sink into your skin the way that I wanted the pigment to sink in. So that's why we don't use red iron oxide for this. Though it does make a highly pigmented lip stain type thing, it does not wear very well at all. So red number seven is not a very good choice for a lip stain because it hates water. It is a really good color though, so it's awesome, an awesome alternative for carmine in anything that has oil in it, like in a lipstick. But here we'll add a couple drops of water and you'll see the water is just gonna sit there in little bubbles. It has absolutely no intention of mixing with the, uh, the pigment. Let's zoom in a little bit for a better look. So I'll take my little toothpick here and give these a little poke. And I can just kind of roll them around or pop them and then there ends up being a sort of a raft of water. <laughs> look at them go! Little tiny red balls of water. They have absolutely no interest in blending with the pigment. I'll add a little bit more water so we can amplify the effect here. And what we're going to end up with is a blob of water on the bottom and a bunch of really dry pigment floating on top. The pigment just really has no interest in playing with the water at all, no matter how much we stir it, we're just sort of breaking it down into smaller particles that are still just sitting on top of the water. So if we take a lip brush and try to apply this, it's not going to be a particularly <laughs> lovely application by any means. So you got sort of a, just a slight tint here, but it's just really, as you can see, not a very good option, sadly, because this is a beautiful color. Rosehip powder and other botanical powders like beetroot and hibiscus are a beautiful color and they are water soluble, but they're just not potent enough to actually stain. pick up some of that. So that's 1 32nd of a teaspoon of rosehip botanical extract and three drops of water and try painting that on my hand there. You can see that in these higher concentration areas you do get some color but once you actually sort of shear it out like there's just really not not a lot of punch to that. And then on top of this this will oxidize reasonably quickly within a couple of days and it'll turn brown, um, which is obviously not what we're looking for. And last, but definitely not least, we have our precious carmine. So we'll add a couple drops of water here. So this is 1 32nd of a teaspoon of carmine. Start blending that in. We'll add a couple drops of glycerin. The glycerin helps the lip stain dry more slowly so that your lips don't feel dehydrated.
So it will take a bit of stirring to get the carmine incorporated. And I'm making a pretty concentrated lip stain. You can really add any amount of water that you want, you know, within reason, but since we're sort of working with drops here, I've added three, and so we'll sort of take that up to five. The more water you add, the less potent your lip stain will be. So I'm going for something pretty darn potent here, but that's totally up to you. All right, so let's do a little swatch test of that. So you can see compared to the rosehip extract, that's really pigmented. And compared to the iron oxide paste, we can really sort of shear this out and get a lovely hue to it that takes into account the color of the skin underneath, which makes this a fantastic lip stain for people of any complexion because it, it'll it really add red to your lips rather than sort of covering them up and making everything sort of just the color of the lip stain. So let's do a couple comparative swatches here. So here is the red iron oxide. So you can see the color is really, really, really different. The carmine here is this bright, lifelike, pinky red color, depending on sort of how much you use. Whereas this red iron oxide is really brick-like. And if we grab some rose hip here, and then we sort of shear it out, you can see that the color potency is just nothing, nothing even close to the carmine. And then if we attempt to grab some more of the red number seven, you can see that's just, that's just sort of laughable. That's not really doing much of anything. So there are your four different sort of color and options and the obvious winner of course being carmine. And so this here, this is our lip stain. This is, this is really it. You'll want to add a single drop of preservative because this does have some water in it, obviously, but that's about it. I would really recommend making this in the container that you're going to store it in. So a tiny little, like a three or a five gram plastic round container is the perfect thing to make your lip stain in. But that's really it. It's super, super simple, and I highly recommend making it in super tiny batches because, as you can see, it's crazy potent. It also makes a fantastic cheek stain, so if you've got a little bit left on your brush after you've applied it to your lips, it looks great on your cheeks. Okay, so it's been about an hour, and I've washed my hands four or five times, and you can still see the red carmine it has actually stained my skin, whereas none of the other swatches have actually left a stain. The lip stain has stained my hand, and I've, again, yeah, I've washed this hand quite a few times and towel dried and worked with other things, so there you go. This stuff stains. <laughs>